There is a memory etched in the language of a people. It is a memory of orange groves and whitewashed courtyards, of philosophers debating under a Spanish sun, of a golden age called La Convivencia, the coexistence. This is the cultural memory of the Sephardic Jews, whose name itself comes from the Hebrew word for Spain, Sephardat. But in 1492, this world ended. The Alhambra decree gave them a brutal choice, convert, leave, or die. An estimated 200,000 Jews were expelled from the kingdoms of Castile and Aragon, scattering across the Mediterranean in what became known as the Sephardic Diaspora. For five centuries, their story has been told in the Ladino ballads they carried, the intricate recipes they preserved, and the longing for a lost homeland. But what if this profound history left another, more indelible record, not in language or liturgy, but in the very nucleotides of their being? Modern genetics has become a revolutionary tool for historians, a molecular archaeology that can trace the path of exile not on maps, but in mitochondrial DNA and Y-chromosome haplotypes. Today, we embark on a forensic journey into the Sephardic genome. We will discover that their DNA is not a simple barcode of identity, but a complex palimpsest, a biological manuscript overwritten with stories of mass conversion, clandestine faith, and a hidden legacy that permeates the modern world in startling ways. The true story of Sephardic is still being written in the blood of its children. Before we can understand the journey, we must confirm the origin. The foundational claim of Jewish peoplehood is a shared ancestry in the ancient Levant, the land of the tribes of Israel. Is this just a religious narrative, or is there a genetic signature? For Sephardic Jews, as with other major diaspora groups, the answer lies powerfully in the Y chromosome. The Y chromosome, passed virtually unchanged from father to son, acts as a genetic surname tracing the direct paternal line. Population genetic studies, such as those led by researchers like Michael Hammer and Carl Skorecki, have identified a set of Y chromosome haplin groups that are disproportionately common among Jewish populations worldwide, including Sephardim. Key among these are branches of haplogroup J, particularly J1 and J2. These haplogroups have their highest diversity and concentration in the Fertile Crescent. The specific subclades, like J1P58, found in Jewish populations, are estimated to have coalesced, or found a common ancestor, roughly 3,000 to 4,000 years ago, a time frame that aligns with the early Israelite kingdoms. When we find a high frequency of these Levantine-specific paternal lineages among Sephardic men in Greece, Turkey, or Bulgaria, it is powerful, quantifiable evidence of an unbroken male line of descent stretching back to the ancient Near East. This is the genetic anchor, the undeniable core that survived every exile. If the paternal line points east to the Levant, the story told through mitochondrial DNA mtDNA, passed from mother to child, points to a dramatic history in the West, in Iberia itself. This is where the Sephardic genetic narrative becomes uniquely complex. When scientists analyze the mtDNA of Sephardic populations, they find a strikingly different profile. There is a significantly higher proportion of mtDNA haplogroups common in Western Europe, and specifically Iberia. Haplogroups like H, V, and K, which are prevalent in the general Spanish and Portuguese populations, appear with high frequency among Sephardic descendants. This discrepancy between paternal Levantine and maternal largely European lineages is not random. It tells a specific historical story, the widespread conversion of Iberian women to Judaism and their marriage into the Jewish community. This was likely not a single event, but a process that unfolded over the centuries of Jewish life in Roman Hispania and later in Al Andalus and the Christian kingdoms. The genetic data suggests this admixture was significant and ongoing. Estimates indicate that approximately 50 to 60 percent of the mtDNA lineages in many Sephardic groups are of European origin. 
This means the Sephardic Jewish community in 1492 was already, in a very real genetic sense, a profound synthesis. It was a population with a strong Levantine paternal heritage and a substantial Iberian maternal heritage. They were not merely Jews living in Spain. They were, biologically, a distinct Iberian-Jewish amalgam forged over a millennium. This foundational admixture is the first major surprise of Sephardic DNA. The edict of expulsion didn't just force movement, it acted like a hammer shattering a crystal, sending fragments flying in different directions, where they then grew new, distinct patterns. The unified Iberio-Jewish gene pool of 1492 ceased to exist, and in its place emerged the Sephardic diaspora spectrum. The Ottoman Balkan branch, the largest contingent accepted the invitation of Sultan Bayezid II and resettled across the Ottoman Empire in cities like Istanbul, Salonika, Izmir, and Sarajevo. Their genetics show the clearest preservation of the pre-expulsion Iberian admixed profile. However, over the next 400 years in the Ottoman millet system, they experienced limited additional admixture with local Balkan and Anatolian populations. This branch is often considered the classic Sephardic genetic profile in scientific studies. The North African or Maghrebi branch. Those who fled south to Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia entered a different genetic landscape. Here, post-expulsion admixture was more pronounced. Genetic studies of these communities, such as the Megarashim of Morocco, reveal significant introgression of North African Berber or Amazigh ancestry, particularly on the maternal side. In some communities, this Berber ancestry can constitute 20 to 30 percent of the total genome, creating a unique tripartite genetic identity, Levantine, Iberian, and North African the English and West European branch. Smaller groups fled to the Italian city-states, the Netherlands, Amsterdam, and later England. These communities often remained more endogamous, marrying within the group, due to their smaller size and minority status in Christian Europe. Their genomes often show a stronger preservation of the original Iberian mix, with less subsequent dilution, acting as genetic time capsules of the 15th century Sephardim. The crucial takeaway is this. There is no single Sephardic tinetic signature. Asking for Sephardic DNA is like asking for European DNA. The variation is immense, defined by the specific post-exile refuge. Perhaps the most profound and surprising revelation from genetics is the invisible legacy of those who did not leave, the conversos, or converts, also pejoratively called Muranos or crypto-Jews. Facing death or expulsion, hundreds of thousands of Jews converted to Catholicism, at least outwardly. The Spanish and Portuguese Inquisitions existed for centuries precisely because they suspected these converts of secretly practicing Judaism. For generations, these converso families often intermarried with one another, a practice known as endogamy, to protect their secret and their heritage. This created isolated genetic lineages within the broader Iberian population. Using sophisticated statistical algorithms like identity by descent segment analysis, geneticists can now identify these shared distinctive chromosomal segments in modern populations. The findings are staggering. Studies, including a major 2018 paper in Nature Communications, indicate that approximately 20% of the modern population in Spain and Portugal, and even a higher percentage in certain regions and among Hispanic populations in the Americas, carries detectable traces of Sephardic Jewish ancestry. These individuals often have no cultural memory or family tradition of Jewishness. The faith was extinguished, but the genetic ghost of Sepharad persists in their DNA, a silent biological echo of the mass conversions of the 15th and 16th centuries. This is not a cultural revival, it is a molecular memory, revealing that the expulsion was a massive demographic catastrophe that permanently altered the genetic fabric of the Iberian world. A common misconception is that Jewish DNA is monolithic. Comparing Sephardic and Ashkenazi genomes highlights how profoundly different historical paths shape genetics. Ashkenazi origins. Their genome is primarily a fusion of Levantine and Southern European, likely Italian, ancestry, which occurred during the Roman diaspora. 
Later, in the late medieval period in Eastern Europe, they passed through an extreme population bottleneck. Geneticists estimate the entire Ashkenazi population of several million descends from a founding group of only about 350 individuals. This bottleneck amplified rare genetic variants, leading to the high prevalence of certain autosomal recessive disorders like Tay-Sachs, Gaucher, and BRCA mutations. Sephardic distinctiveness. Their story lacked this severe late bottleneck. Their admixture was broader, Iberian, than later North African or Balkan, and more continuous. Consequently, they have a different set of characteristic genetic disorders, such as familial Mediterranean fever, FMF, and a higher prevalence of beta thalassemia, reflecting their Mediterranean and Middle Eastern gene flow. Their genetic diversity is generally higher, and they lack the extreme founder effect signals that characterize the Ashkenazi genome. The two groups share the Levantine core, but are distinct genetic edifices built from different regional materials and through different demographic histories. The genome of the Sephardic Jews is more than a biological curiosity. It is a living, molecular archive. It confirms the ancient Levantine origin. It documents the transformative, gender-asymmetric merger with the people of Iberia. It maps the traumatic diaspora of 1492 through the divergent genetic paths of its fragments. And 